Do you want fake news? Or do you want to hear the good news? Do you want fake news? Or the good news? Fake news? Or the good news? Let God be true and every man a liar if those men deny God's truth. You remember that Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We are here today to talk about life, his life, that he gave to us and to each child upon conception. We are here today to talk about truth, the truth, his truth, that God made us in his image and he said in his word do not kill the innocent that is a direct quote we are here today to talk about the way because Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life no man comes to the Father but by me did you know that it is not only Democrats who create fake news. Did you know that? Yes. News is the unfolding of Christian history. News is the unfolding of Christian history. Everything centers around Jesus Christ. Words, thoughts, actions may be done in rebellion against him or in obedience to him. There is no neutrality. You are either for him or against him. Jesus said, I will spit you out of my mouth if you are lukewarm. He said, I would rather you be hot or cold. If you are lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. What does that mean? Hot or cold or lukewarm? Let me ask you of those three, if someone is cold, if they have a cold heart toward God and toward the innocent, then they are cold. If they are hot, they have a fire in their heart and neither their love for God nor the innocent will be quenched. But what if someone is lukewarm? If someone is lukewarm, Jesus said, I will spit you out of my mouth, that is, the Lord Jesus Christ quoted in the New Testament that's the truth that's not fake news so what does it mean to be lukewarm if someone says do not kill the innocent and we must protect every child by love and by law that is hot that is the love of the Lord burning in their hearts for the innocent if someone says, like they do across the street, that, and this is at Planned Parenthood, where this very morning they are scheduled to kill many children. If someone says, don't tell me what to do, if I want to kill this fetus, I will kill this unborn child that is cold, that is ice in their veins. Remember Jesus said the two greatest commandments are to love God and to love your neighbor. Well, hot means fire in your heart for God and the innocent. Cold means ice in your veins. Pro-choice means to kill the innocent. Then what is lukewarm? If hot is to love and protect the innocent and cold is kill the innocent, then what is lukewarm? Because in Revelation chapter 3, verses 15 and 16, and this is in red letters because the publishers have agreed when they print certain Bibles, if it's the words of Jesus, they're going to use a red, red ink. So Revelation chapter 3, the Lord said, I'd rather you were hot or cold, because if you are neither hot nor cold, but lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. Some translations say, I will vomit you out of my mouth. So then, again, what is lukewarm? I'm stressing this because of how vitally important it is. Hot is obeying God, 
and loving the innocent? Cold is saying, don't tell me what to do. So then lukewarm is saying, I believe in God, I am pro-life, but then agreeing to kill an innocent child. That's what lukewarm is. That is lukewarm. Saying you are pro-life, but paying, giving money to kill a child is lukewarm. If anyone here has done that, there is forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Even for King David, who was a murderer and an adulterer, he turned to the Lord in sorrow, and God forgave him and redeemed him. For there is redemption in Jesus Christ, and in trusting him, and in his crucifixion and his resurrection. For he died so that those who trust in him can escape the consequences of sin, eternal separation from God. Even if we have killed our own child, or if we have paid to kill a child, or whatever our sin and our many sins, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Jesus paid that price. So those who trust in him will not be forever separated from God, but will be saved. But none of that changes the Lord's warning. For there is no guarantee that a lowly man or a famous man, a weak man or a powerful man, there is no guarantee that a man who sins against God will repent. Thus Jesus said, I would rather you be hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. Why though, hot or cold? Hot fire in your heart and toward the innocent love cold don't tell me what to do you curse God and you kill the child lukewarm you will say you love God and you are pro-life but you will kill the innocent lukewarm deceives those who are in the valley of decision lukewarm is more dangerous to the world than those who are evidently the enemy fake news. You said you'd rather have the good news than the fake news. Me too. Some of what you cheered this week, and I'm saying you, God wants to reach our nation, and he wants to reach it through his body, those who love and trust in Jesus Christ. But that doesn't mean that everything we do and everything we say honors the Lord. Some of you this week have cheered fake news and this may shock you because fake news doesn't come only from Democrats for as the Apostle Paul wrote let God be true and every man a liar in other words even if everyone else is a liar God tells the truth yesterday in Washington DC at the March for Life and there, are, there have been hundreds of marches before and after all over the nation. So thank you for being here today. They cheered to hear that the Republicans have passed laws and issued executive orders to not pay for abortion. That would be a good thing, right? To not pay for abortion. They were called the Hyde Amendment and the Mexico City Policy. What? would it be if the government passed laws saying that they would not pay to kill a child and then they gave Planned Parenthood billions of dollars? Would that be hot, cold, or lukewarm? Could anyone answer? Would that be hot, cold, or lukewarm? Anyone? Lukewarm. That would be lukewarm to say we passed the law that we will not pay for abortion and then to give Planned Parenthood billions of dollars. That would be lukewarm. The Hyde Amendment says you can't use tax dollars to pay for abortion here in America, and that was cheered at the National March yesterday. When George W. Bush was president, the Hyde Amendment was in full force. Do you know how much money the Bush administration gave to Planned Parenthood? 
In his eight years, President Bush gave to that child-killing organization, a franchise of which sits right across the street, of your tax dollars, over $2 billion from the George W. Bush administration alone. Two billion. That's fake news. It was fake news from the march in D.C. to the well-meaning marchers who cheered because the Hyde Amendment is in force, but money is fungible, and so when they give the money by the billions to Planned Parenthood, and by they I mean the Republican pro-life administrations, when they give the money by the billions to Planned Parenthood, they say, will you promise not to use this money for abortion? And with, with barely holding back their mockery and their laughing, and with their fingers crossed behind their back, they say, oh, we promise. That's fake news. Democrat Bill Clinton only gave Planned Parenthood about $1 billion in his eight years. And even though the Republicans, pro-life Republicans, controlled the House, the Senate, the White House, and the U.S. Supreme Court, they had the trifecta, the legislative, the executive, and the judicial branches, even then, even though the majority of the judges in the federal judiciary were put in office by many of us here, and we were told that they were pro-life, even then, and with the Hyde Amendment in place, they gave $2 billion to the abortion industry. So that was only some of the fake news at the National March for Life. I'll give you two more examples. The crowd was told to cheer, and cheer they did, that an executive order was passed. It was reenacted. It's called the Mexico City Policy. That was drawn up by one of my dearest friends a long time ago, Ambassador Alan Keyes. Alan Keyes. Sadly, it was drawn up by Alan Keyes. Sadly. Because the Mexico City policy has five loopholes through which you can drive busloads of children every day, through which our government has paid to abort children overseas, the way the Hyde Amendment has easily enabled them to pay to kill American babies here at home. You see why I'm talking about fake news and why Jesus said, I'd rather you be hot or cold because lukewarm is far more dangerous. 1984, back when maybe there was less tension between America and Mexico, uh, Alan Keyes was there as an ambassador appointed by Ronald Reagan. And in the Mexico City policy, which took force January 1st, 1985, there were literally five loopholes of how you could use U.S. foreign aid, our tax dollars given to nations abroad that promote or advise or perform abortions. The Mexico P City policy literally says you can perform an abortion if, and you could refer for abortion if, and you could and you could advocate for abortion if. If you're curious about that after this march, just Google the five loopholes of the Mexico City policy. Back in the early 90s, we sent, we, the Board of Colorado Right to Life, we sent a handwritten letter to Dr. Keyes, and we mailed it to his home address, and we asked him, please recognize that even if it's done by pro-lifers, even if it's done by Republicans, even if it's done by conservatives, it is immoral to fund the killing of an innocent child. It is immoral. God looks God looks at the exceptions. When David murdered Uriah, 
did God look at all the men that David did not kill and say, well, you know, there's a lot of people around. He didn't murder any of those people. Or did he look at the one person who David murdered? And even though he was the king, the leader of the nation, God condemned David for what he did. But thank the Lord, he repented before God and was forgiven. Eve ate from one piece of fruit on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Did God look at all the fruit that she didn't eat? Or did he look at the exception? If a man says he's lived a good life, but he murdered his neighbor, does the judge look at all the people he never killed? Or does he look at the one that he did kill? Alan Key since then has been a stalwart opposing any exception. In fact, he's, go, he's gone so far as to say this. If we would all agree to pay to abort one child, the devil would be happy to give up abortion around the world. If we would all agree, if we would all consent, if we would all pass a law that says you only abort one child with our money, here's the money, and then we get, what do we get in return? We get abortion ended. Alan Key said, that's the devil's game. He would take that offer. Because ultimately, it's not the killing of the child. Ultimately, it's getting everyone to disobey God, to rebel against God. That is the ultimate goal. So just like the Hyde Amendment allowed George Bush to give $2 billion to the abortion industry, the Mexico City policy has five loopholes which have been used like the Hyde Amendment to pay to kill many kids in South America and Europe and Africa and Asia. Is that hot? A fire in your heart to love God and your neighbor? Or is it cold to say, don't tell me what to do, I'm going to kill children? Or is it lukewarm to say the Hyde Amendment, the Mexico City policy, we are not paying for abortion, but then quietly pay to kill kids. That is lukewarm. Fake news doesn't only come from the Democrats. Fake news from pro-lifers about abortion is lukewarm. And Jesus said, if you are lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. There are not as many people here as they were just even a week ago at the Capitol in Denver. And Colorado Right to Life has organized March for Lives for decades, being the very first Right to Life group established in the nation, even before National Right to Life. And this message was shared earlier this week in a full page ad in the Washington Times that was scheduled to greet Donald Trump on the first Monday morning that he would wake up in the White House and it was endorsed by a founding member of National Right to Life, John Archibald, ah, who sent this Archibald. message to his friends and said, I have donated to pay for this ad in Washington, in the Washington Times, which goes to every congressman on the Hill and throughout the White House, and in fact, around the country to conservatives. He said, I hope you will support this message too. It is vital that pro-lifers know the truth. <coughs> Excuse me. When pro-lifers put out fake news about abortion, the only way you can get worse than that is when the church puts out fake news about child killing. That's the only way you can do worse. And when Jesus had a hard message for his followers and one by one they left, and pretty soon there was almost no one left, and he said to his apostles, well, are you gonna leave too? Because this message is harsh. And Peter said, Lord, 
where would we go? Elijah the prophet thought there was no one left, no one. But the Lord said, no, there are those who have not bowed the knee to rebel against God and kill the innocent. So the third piece of fake news, and there was a lot more yesterday at the march, but if you go to our website, coloradorighttolife.org, you'll see the Washington Times full page ad to Donald Trump right at the top, click on it. And in fact, you could read the whole issue of the Washington Times, and there it is on page three. You just open the paper, color ad, full page, a message to Christians and pro-lifers around the nation. The third piece will help you to realize how desperate the situation is. Pray for Donald Trump because he has been misinformed by the pro-life advisors around him. Yet he is the commander-in-chief, the president of the United States. God will hold him responsible if he himself is lukewarm just as he holds anyone responsible. If Donald Trump pays to kill one innocent child, will that go well for him when he stands before God? If he pays to kill one child, if he repents, he can be redeemed and have eternal life through Jesus Christ. Yesterday at the march, Vice President Mike Pence promised the Christians there, and they cheered, on cue, he promised them that they would get a Supreme Court justice like Antonin Scalia, who recently passed away. Antonin Scalia was the pro-life Hyde Amendment. Antonin Scalia was the Mexico City policy. Antonin Scalia was fake news. Antonin Scalia not only never never wrote in a majority opinion or a dissent or in an editorial comment or said at any event where he was speaking and sharing his uh, judicial views, he never once affirmed the child's right to life, never, not one time. And he is considered the top tier hero of the pro-life community in government, he was, Antonin Scalia. In fact, he was not shy about his rejection of the right to life of the unborn. Antonin Scalia rejected the truth that the Creator has endowed every one of us with a God-given right to life. He rejected that and instead, as professor, law professor from Notre Dame, Charles Rice Emeritus, has said on our documentary, focus on the strategy which you can see at our website that Antonin Scalia and all the pro-life Republican Supreme Court justices they all hold to the essential claim of Roe v. Wade that the unborn child does not have a right to life and the government can decide when and where and how those children can be killed that was the position of Antonin Scalia throughout his tenure on the court. He was asked at the Pew Forum, a prestigious gathering, and you can find this on our website, or even easier, go to ProLifeProfiles.com. ProLifeProfiles.com, and you'll find the source for this one of many statements I'll share with you from Antonin Scalia. He said, if you pass a law that bans abortion in every state, I will strike down that law. That law would be wrong. It would be like Roe v. Wade. If you want abortion in California, you pass the law and you legalize abortion and I'll uphold abortion in California. You want abortion in New York, I'll uphold it in New York. You want it in Maine, you want it in New Hampshire, you want it in Vermont, you want it in Washington, you want it in Oregon. Where do you want abortion? I'll uphold abortion. Is that pro-life? No. no! Is that a right to life position that the baby has a right to life? No. States have the right to prosecute murder. They do not have the right to decriminalize murder. 
If some state said, we're going to kill blacks, another we're going to kill Jews, another we're going to kill children, that state has no right to avoid interference and avoid the rest of the nation from coming in and stopping them. Because these are God-given rights that no jurisdiction has the right to repeal. So how can it be? How can it be that the hundreds of thousands on the mall in Washington, D.C. cheered when Mike Pence said, we are going to nominate judges like Antonin Scalia. And they cheered. It was fake news. And that fake news is lukewarm. And it's been coming from pro-life conservative Republicans for decades. Which party passed Roe v. Wade? Does anyone know? Republican. The Republican Party. The justice who wrote Roe v. Wade was a Republican judge of the Supreme Court in 1973 that upheld that opinion. Five of the judges were Republican nominated judges. By the time George W. Bush left office, 60% of the federal judiciary was Republican, mostly nominated by Ronald Reagan, George H. W. Bush, George W. Bush, and they were overwhelmingly pro-abortion. Does anyone doubt that the federal judiciary has been overwhelmingly pro-abortion? Of course not. So we've covered the three. Just three of the many pieces of fake news yesterday. And we've covered two of the three of the words that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We've covered the truth that we must stand against fake news and for the truth that God said do not kill the innocent in any argument you hear that tries to get you to affirm killing the innocent needs to be rejected the second I am the way we've covered that that Jesus said no man comes to the Father but by me the third I am the way the truth and the life Let's end with the third and focus on, like Biff Gore said, human life. You are made in God's image. You are not an animal. You are not related to worms or fish or chimpanzees. Jesus also said that God made us at the beginning male and female. And he knows because he is God. The Trinity, three persons in one God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Today it is considered hate speech to state that God made us male and female. Today it is considered hate speech to state that God instituted marriage between a man and a woman. Today it is considered hate speech to remind people that we are not animals, but that we are made in God's image. And God said, do not kill the innocent, therefore it is wrong to kill an unborn child. And do you realize why it is wrong? There is only one reason why abortion is wrong. It is not, as was said yesterday, because science tells us that abortion is wrong. Science can give us information and technology. It can help someone build a bomb and place it in a restaurant and science could tell us about how the matter in that restaurant will be rearranged after the bomb explodes but science can't tell you that the terrorist who planted that bomb was wrong and that he is now in hell with those who had gone before him science can't tell you any of that because the laws of science don't use the words right and wrong abortion is only wrong for the following reason abortion is wrong because it's a baby, and it's always wrong to intentionally kill a baby. And that's because we are made in God's image, and God said, do not kill the innocent. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Amen.